We're here to serve notice to government. Enough is enough. We will not tolerate, we will not put up with it anymore. Well, our government is very respectful of, of uh, our constitutional obligation, and any resource development that we do will be safe for Canadians and safe for the environment. That was the beginning of what became a very tense moment in the foyer of the House of Commons this afternoon as a select group of AFN chiefs protesting on the Hill were brought into the House of Commons foyer. They met briefly, as you just saw, with the Natural Resource Minister, Joe Oliver, who came out. And then they wanted to vote their, voice their frustrations over the omnibus budget bill and other issues. And then tensions escalated when some of the chiefs tried to get into the chamber itself. And it raises a lot of questions. Have First Nations frustrations with the government reached a tipping point? What was accomplished with today's action? One of the chiefs who was there, the Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, was also one of the chiefs inside the foyer today. Derek Nipanaki joins me now. Grand Chief, good to see you. Thanks for having me on the show. I want show. to show you the video uh, as people are watching this and, and, and watch this conversation. What exactly happened there in this confrontation that we'll see? Chief, can you tell us what happened? Well, certainly. Once we once we entered the foyer and began uh, walking down, we we were stopped at the entrance to the uh, to the actual chamber, and uh, from there, Minister Oliver came out. He uh, engaged with uh, Ogema Wallace Fox from from Onion Lake. Ogema Fox put him on notice that uh, the unilateral imposition of of legislation is going to stop, and that we were putting them on notice that enough is enough. We're no longer going to participate in these types of processes if we're not going to be heard and if we're not going to be considered and uh, I think the message came across strong and clear our young people from across all the territories across Canada were, were on hand to listen they've seen it through the through the uh, social media and they're standing tall standing firm and supporting us on this why what happened here now now as they tried to get into the chamber why did they try to get into the chamber what was the confrontation with security guards about here well the uh, the confrontation that occurred was uh, I think initiated because we wanted to speak to the government we didn't want to speak to an individual minister who was going to get into rhetoric on consultation we know that if Canada right now was following its constitutional obligations, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have been there this afternoon. You know, we we wanted to get in there to talk to, directly to government and to to to, uh, you know, voice our voice our feelings about what's happening. This omnibus bill, for example, C45 that's coming through, it's completely unacceptable to us. The uh, the land surrender provision is something that we haven't seen in, in, in this generation, and we need to get in the way of it, and that's, that, that was what this afternoon was about. How would you characterize what Mr. Oliver said to you? Well, it's common rhetoric. It's common misperception. It's a, it's a common ploy of this government to, uh, to misguide and to, to provide perspectives and to, and to take Canadians on a, on a path of, of, uh, of make-believe politics where they say they're engaging and consulting with us. They say they respect the constitu constitutional obligations and clearly they don't. And they're not engaging with us. They're not consulting with us at a level that's meaningful. Um, you know, the, the international standards of free prior and informed consent have to play a role in the discussion and they're not even, they're not even on the radar yet with this government. Is this a tipping point? I mean, is this what we saw here? which we don't see very often, and you and I have spoken about this before, is this a sign that frustration has reached some kind of tipping point? Well, if you look in, and we observe, and as chiefs, we always watch what our young people are doing. And uh, when we listen to the, to, the, to the voices of our young people, they are saying that enough is enough. They're, they're accessing the social media networks. They're putting their words out on, on, uh, through social media, saying, what are the chiefs going to do? We need to stand up now, and we are going to act. And this is just the beginning of it. We were in there today as guests of Charlie Angus of the NDP. That's how we, that's how we went into the House of Commons. So you know, if we were there in any other fashion, uh, I don't know how it's been portrayed generally by the media, but we were there in a respectful way. We weren't but, but what do you say? You say enough is enough, and this is just the beginning. This is a tipping point. What is next? Well, I think that what's happening is we're seeing a lot of our young leaders, and they may not be Indian Act chiefs, they may not be Grand Chiefs, they may not be National Chiefs. They're the young people in the schools, in the institutions, in the, in the institutions of higher learning, taking up the responsibilities of their ancestors, recognizing their role as Indigenous people and deciding that we're going to take a stand now, and, and, and you know, people are planning. But plan I'm trying to get some, is it more protests? Will there be violence? Will there be confrontation? Will it be peaceful? Give, give me a sense of what, obviously we're at the beginning of something here. What is it? Well, I think first and foremost, it's important, Evan, to remember that we're treaty people. We signed treaty, and in signing treaty, we agreed to a respectful relationship, and that includes uh, observing law. You know, so 
Um, to go beyond that would be a, a very considerable step that we don't plan for. We, we don't uh, plan to go out of our way to, to invoke violence on our neighbour. That's not, that's not who we are as the Indigenous people. But we do, there, is a, there is a youthful passion out there. That youthful passion is coming to the surface now and uh, whichever form it's going to take is, uh, is uh, I guess, anybody's guess right now. But that's but interesting. So you're saying th there is a sense that the chiefs have a, have a way of protesting, but you're saying... It, Give me a sense of, have the young people reached such a frustration that you say you don't know what form the next protest could take? I think that's, uh, this meeting is a case in point. We, we did not have a plan to come here to be on Parliament Hill, but as, as it was, as you've seen what's happened today, you know, these, uh, these types of spontaneous occurrences, I think, are going to rise because it represents the passion of our young people, the passion of our youth. And if we have chiefs that are standing up and that are willing to go into the House of Commons and shove our way around there when we need to, our youth are going to see that, they're going to appreciate it, and we're going to appreciate them back when they stand up too. That's interesting. Shove your way around. Last thing. Uh, we've asked our, our audience in our ballot box, has the government done enough to address First Nations concern? They talk about this omnibus bill. You had the Crown First Nations meeting, and you and I talked when you were here in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Has the government done enough to address your concerns? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And the government may think that there's solutions uh, going forward to this, but we've participated in their Senate committees. We've participated in their parliamentary committees. We've provided written submissions and objection to these, these bills that are going through, and it's falling on deaf ears. So they don't have a solution. We'll provide the solution through our young people. Grand Chief Derek Nipanak uh, from uh, Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, good to see you here. Very interesting development today. You know, there's a vote going on right now, folks, about the budget uh, implementation bill. You see the reaction from First Nations Chief. Very unhelpful in their point of view. I appreciate your time today. We'll be watching it very closely. Thank you very much, Evan. Meantime, Alberta's progressive conservative government is engulfed in their own growing crisis.